In this video, we'll look at which solver to use to create a realistic glass fill scene. We'll look at scene setup, and then we'll go on to explore the importance of scale and what effects that can have on your fluid sim. We'll then explore techniques in setting up a real world scale glass fill. In this scene, we'll explore how we would set up a fluid pour scene to fill up, say, a glass of water, especially to do it at real world scale. So for this type of scene, the solver that you want to use is XP Fluid Effects, and we'll explain why in a moment. But for real world scale fluid pours, Fluid Effects is the solver to use. So we can see here we've got a cached scene and we've got this uh, fluid pour pouring into our glass. And on the face of it, it looks quite nice. I think we've got a, a decent enough fluid simulation here, but there is a problem. We'll um, uh, point out that problem and explain why in a moment. But before we do, one point to note in setting up fluid scenes, it's, in it, it's a mistake that's, that's made often, is that um, often people, if they want to do a fluid solve into a glass like this, if we just switch off our emitter and that cache, is that they'll bring an emitter and want to create the fluid pour directly from this emitter. So we have emitter in our scene here. Let's just have a look at the emission settings. It's set to hexagonal, which is our mode, which is best for fluids. And if we hit play, you can see that we're getting this stream of particles and it's creating a fluid solve, but we're getting this banding happening. And you'll see this happening, especially if you've got uh, particles at a particular scale. Now this banding can be um, fixed Fixed somewhat with a bit of jitter on the Z axis. Let's put, I don't know, 1.5 centimeters jitter on that emission. And you can see it kind of sorts it out a bit, but we're still getting some of that banding and we're not really getting a nice consistent stream of water. But you need to think about what the fluid solver is doing to understand why this method isn't wise. Because we are continuously pumping more and more fresh particles into this scene. And this water stream is never given the chance, fluid effects is never given the chance to be able to solve this into a nice stream that has the appropriate fluid density values and, and pressures and so forth. And so you're never going to get a nice, consistent, realistic stream because the solver can't do this. This is not what happens in the real world. So instead of that, let's delete that emitter. What we want to do is emit our particles into some kind of vessel. Now, this can be a very simple vessel. In this case, look, it's just um, it's just a, a half cylinder that's been deformed a little. And this is enough for the particles to be emitted from the emitter. The fluid solver can then do its thing and make sure and calculate all those fluid densities, which works out the pressure and to get nice, accurate uh, velocity calculations. And it means by the time that we're leaving this vessel, we have a properly solved fluid particle stream. And that's working. So at the very least, you need to create some kind of very basic vessel like this. If you want to be super accurate, you need to model an object, which is what you're trying to simulate, like a wine bottle or a, a nozzle of some other description, maybe from a, a, a can of beer or can of pop. So that is a very important step that you shouldn't miss. Always model and emit your particles into some kind of vessel, which will then pour the liquid and you'll get a much better fluid simulation. So let's talk about scale. If we have a look at our glass object, we'll have a look at the size and look, we can see that it is one meter and 10 centimeters tall. So it is big. If we bring in a Cinema 4D figure, which is 180 centimetres, so just under six foot, and we can see this glass is massive. It's like a hot tub size glass. And if we look at the simulation under that lens, we can see that actually it's simulating a very large flow of water that's sloshing around a large hot tub size glass. It's, it's slow and a kind of a languid fluid movement because there's a big volume of water in here. And so of course this isn't realistic if we're wanting to simulate a real world size glass filling up. So we need to sim at the appropriate scale. 
So let's go to a scene where we have done that. So here we have a very similar scene and we've got this cached. And if we hit play, you can see that it's actually filling up much more quickly. Now, this is behaving as it should. So let's have a look at our glass. Let's highlight it and have a look. Yes, look, it's 11 centimetres tall now. So this is a real world size glass. And because we're simming at this scale, we've got a much re uh, more realistic pour. It's taking three seconds to fill up this glass from bottom to top with water. If we go back to our other scene, you can see that after three seconds, we've hardly touched. It is, what, less than a third full, probably. And it's nowhere near filling even towards the end of our scene. So that's not realistic. So let's go back to our real world scale. So we need to sim at this scale to have proper realism. But simming at this scale can cause issues. And if you don't understand those issues and know how to fix them, it's going to cause a problem with your simulation. So let's explore those. So we'll switch off this cache. And what we need to do is have a look at our particles falling from our vessel without our fluid solver active. And this is going to highlight the problem. So let's just deactivate that. So we still have a gravity in our scene. The gravity is set to the real world value, the default of, of uh, 9.81 uh, meters. And if we hit play, we're getting this stream and it looks OK. But if we hit Control D to have a look at our um, Cinema 4D project settings and in our X particles project settings, look to get this stream of particles to be smooth, so for the gravity to be solving smoothly, we have had to increase the subframe steps to seven from the default z uh, one subframe step. So let's put it back down to the default. Hit play. Here's the problem. When we are simming at a much smaller scale with much tinier particles, the gravity at the default real world strength it's too strong to be able to get a smooth flow because you can see there aren't enough subframes to prevent this stepping. And the smaller we go in scale, the worse this stepping will be with gravity at its real world strength. Now, look, we could divide it by 10. So make the gravitational force much less strong. And you can see we haven't got that stepping problem. But then if we switch fluid effects back on, all we have done is effectively we're simming a much larger scale fluid sim again. Because with less gravitational force, it's taking longer for this fluid body to get out and it's taking longer to fill up and we're getting a much more uh, slow swirling fluid solve. So that's not going to work. We need this to be at the default. But at default at this scale, we're getting stepping. So the way in which we sort that out is with those X particles subframe steps. We increase them to a point where we have enough uh, sub steps per frame for the gravity to be um, solved correctly. So let's hit play. On one, we've got stepping. On two, we've still got stepping. On three, it's reducing still a bit. And we can just keep going until we've got that as smooth as we like. Let's say seven subframe steps. And that's a pretty smooth solve now for this gravity on our particles. So now we've got that, we can introduce our fluid solver. And we're getting a nice stream. And we are getting our fluid filling up in our glass at the appropriate scale. So that's looking pretty good. So that is an important point. Our fluid solver cannot solve an accurate stream if the base particle animation before the fluid solver even starts is stepping in this way because it just it's not going to be able to simulate uh, an accurate velocity solve. If we switch on fluid effects, you will see that it, it helps, but we never get any fill in our simulation 
because the velocity calculations in the food effects just aren't accurate, aren't correct, because the base simulation just doesn't have enough accuracy. So if we increase our subframe steps, it fixes that gravity stepping issue. And then we bring in the fluid effects. And now fluid effects is able to solve accurately the velocity of those particles. And we're getting nice fill of the glass and it's filling up at the appropriate speed for this scale. And this is the reason why XP Fluid Effects is the solver to use for a scene like this at real world scale. Because Fluid PBD is a position based solver and it is an iterative solver. And that means that for every iteration, for every extra iteration that is calculated, the constraints within that solver get stiffer and stiffer. And because we've increased the subframe steps so much, we've massively increased the iterations per frame, which means that that fluid PBD solve, the constraints would be so stiff that the simulation would become unstable. And there are certain tricks to be able to mitigate that, but it's much quicker, much more accurate, and you'll get much better results using XP fluid effects, which doesn't suffer from that um, stiffness, that constraints stiffness you get with very high iterations. And just finally to note, the reason why we wouldn't use XP fluid flip in a simulation like this is one of the uh, collisions calculations. XP Fluid Flip doesn't use the polygon collisions of our vessel here. It would have to sample this geometry and where that geometry lies within a voxel grid. And of course, any bit of geometry that is quite thin or has any angles that aren't 90 degrees or especially any curves aren't going to be sampled accurately in a three-dimensional voxel grid and those collisions aren't going to work and we're going to get vessels with leaking particles. So this is a job for XP fluid effects and it works really well. So let's just compare. We have now simulated this and managed to simulate this at a much lower scale. So if we just put the cache back on so we can play it back quickly. So now we're getting a nice real world scale animation. So let's compare this with an animation that is simulated at a much too big a scale for the scene we're after. So if we go to our comparison scene, you can see on the left we have our large scale sim. So this was simmed at the correct kind of dimensions for this scene. So the cup is just over one meter tall. We've obviously got our six foot chap here. And then what we have done is we've, we've cached our small scale scene that we've just looked at. And then once it's cached, we've then scaled up that scene. Um, so we're still getting the same animation and movement, uh, but it's the same size as our large scale one. And if we play them next to each other, you can see the difference simming at a small scale makes. There the glass is just about full and this one, I mean, it's not even a third full. And if you look at the actual movement of the water itself, this is moving up realistically for a glass that's just over 10 centimetres tall. This one is uh, moving realistically for a huge one metre vessel and you can see the difference in that simulation. So in X-Particles Fluids, scale is important for the look that you're after. You are able to scale at real world values for things like water fills. And if that is the case, then XP Fluid FX is the fluid solver to use.